rescued a Robespierre's men. They perished in the line of duty.
after us. You must carry on, I beg you. I, I will make it. I'm out of breath. Oh, I'm more dead, Gia. Suzanne, just a bit more. We're almost there. Automats ravaged the church and slaughtered the faithful.
I'm getting closer to Les Invalides. Here, I should be able to cross the moat easily. Was no longer sustainable, Your Majesty. Your mechanical revolution has changed the face of the kingdom, but the coffers are woefully empty. The debt, Monsieur Necker. This debt that you and your banking friends helped to create for your own benefit, and which is now forcing us to levy new taxes. Will my subjects be able to bear another tax? Yes, Your Majesty. As long as it is distributed fairly, the representatives of the nobility, the clergy, and the Third Estate must come to an agreement. That is why we have convened the Estates General. Tomorrow you are to preside over the opening ceremonies. Oh, your Estates General. Nothing good can come of it. You have roused the spirit of rebellion. All I hear about are their damned Cahiers de Doléances. My rightful enjoyment is being challenged. The streets of Versailles are teeming with loudmouth fanatics with sacrilegious thoughts. Tell me, Monsieur le Ministre, have you purposely set this army of the unwashed against me? Your Majesty, I have always been your most faithful servant. Beware, Necker. Beware. I have a surprise in store for anyone who dares attack my throne.
Suzanne, my dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. No, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But what on earth are you? It is of no importance. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. It's impossible to describe. All the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the king has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Eglise Sainte Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger. While the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago. The representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. Where are the monks, mon père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided, and we are unarmed. Without you, without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge.
We must speak, you and I, in private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vaucanson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu. What have I done to deserve such a fate? Why is the king sworn to destroy me? And all that I hold dear. After everything I've done for him. My abnegation. Why would the king owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refuse to accept any remuneration for my services in order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the king's coffers with two and a half million livres from my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the king keeps in the tailor-made armoire de fer in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Monsieur le Marquis. I'm listening. Goodbye, Monsieur. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Have your efforts paid off? Minister Necker claims that you are a familiar face at the Twillery Palace. Well, that old story. Will it hound me until I have drawn my last breath? This madame is nothing but an unfounded rumor that I am trying in vain to dispel. To what do I owe the displeasure of having to defend myself once again? I must get hold of some documents that are kept in an armored safe in the king's chambers. What lock could resist your talents? Minister Necker said it was indestructible. Hmm. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. Who could help you? After all, a lock is nothing more than a simple mechanism. 
If only Monsieur Bailly were here, he would find a solution for you in no time. To free him, I would have to go back to the Louvre. Well, then I think you should. Now, who else might be of use? Oh, there's Monsieur Lavoisier as well, our gunpowder commissioner. I'm sure he'll have no trouble finding you something you can use to blow the door off that stubborn safe. Good. I will go and find him. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have an urgent matter to attend to. You are forgiven for everything. In that case, it has been a pleasure, madam. Has anyone seen Monsieur de Mirabeau? Aegis, a word, s'il vous plaît. Monsieur Raymond. Aegis, we are very pleased to see you again. It was very unwise of us to leave the Societe without such a capable bodyguard as yourself. It is a miracle that we got here safely. What do you want to talk to me about? Have you ever heard of the Club de Massiac, Aegis? No, monsieur. It's an association that meets at the Hotel de Massiac, just west of Le Halle. It counts some of the wealthiest plantation owners in the Empire. Those from Saint-Domingue and the Petite Santé are most formidable adversaries. They are waging a war of influence to keep the slave trade going and resort to the vilest methods to achieve their ends. They worship nothing but money. And their greed is matched only by their cruelty. Regrettably, my interests occasionally require me to suffer their company. Two months ago, I was in La Havre to settle some business with the Admiralty. When I overheard a conversation between two planters from Bastère, if they are to be believed, the Club de Massiac is plotting to create sleepless slaves, des esclaves sans sommeil. Those were their exact words. It's hard to say what this could possibly mean, but I fear they plan to administer some foul drug to their slaves to force them to toil day and night without rest. Our organization will not let these poor souls endure such a hell. Aegis, we must look into this. It is a matter of great urgency. You speak of greed, Monsieur Raymond. But could you enlighten us as to what makes you any different from the planters you condemn? What exactly do you accuse me of, Monsieur de Robespierre? S'il vous plaît, do tell. Do you not also exploit the labor of these poor souls yourself on your indigo plantation? I fight every minute of every day to improve their condition. No one would have the audacity to deny this. If that's the case, then why wait? Free them. You preach abolition, yet you continue to line your pockets at their expense. The truth is, you refuse to upend the established colonial order because your entire fortune depends on it. It's easy to criticize from atop Mount Olympus, Maximilian. You know nothing of the realities of Saint-Domingue. What would happen to all these people if I freed them tomorrow? Without an education, without a livelihood, I would be condemning them to the most abject misery. No, I must act with both compassion and realism. It is true that every reform must be approached with prudence. This reform is not so difficult. I've begun it myself at La Belle Gabrielle, my plantation in Guyane. There you will not find slaves, but workers who earn a weekly wage. And my plantation is no less profitable. Ah, yes, profit. Because that's the most important thing. Don't you see, the law of nature gives every man the right to cultivate his own land. Monsieur, calm yourselves. I implore you. Now is no time to quarrel. What Monsieur Raymond has related to us is extremely worrying. We must find out more about this plot to create sleepless slaves as quickly as possible. Aegis, you are the only one who stands a chance of making it to the Hotel de Massiac alive.
Monsieur Lavoisier. Madame, you're my guardian angel. I don't know anything about you or what drives you, but I owe you my life and can refuse you nothing. I would like to access the contents of a safe that is supposedly unbreakable. Dare I ask for your help, Monsieur Lavoisier? And how can I be of assistance to you, madame? I need gunpowder to break through the door. Gunpowder? But I don't have a speck of it, mon ami. <laughs> Do you think I just walk around with explosives in my pockets? Oh. I apologize. It was Monsieur de Mirabeau's idea. Mirabeau? What is this ridiculousness? I suspect he knows full well whatever he's playing at. Where is the animal? So we can ask him what's truly going on. He has left. He had an urgent matter to attend to. Eh bien. I'm sorry, madame. If I could inspect the safe and determine what metal was used in its fabrication, I might be able to find a solution. But given the circumstances, I'm sadly not in a position to help you. I understand. How do you intend to counter the King's actions? Unfortunately, we don't have the upper hand. For now, we can only hope to protect ourselves from him. I am convinced that something is afoot. Something that could destroy all our hopes in an instant. You have my full attention. You should know that I am a gunpowder commissioner. As such, I oversee the provision of gunpowder to the Kingdom's arsenals. La Senale de Paris in particular. For the past two days, a large quantity of gunpowder from Mars saint has been sitting near Les Invalides. It's in a warehouse by the factories. But the men I sent to take possession of the cargo and transport it to the Arsenal have gone missing. Do you realize what this means? The gunpowder could have fallen into our enemy's hands. It's possible. One thing is certain. It's enough to destroy half of Paris. Whether it is still in the warehouse or has fallen into the wrong hands, we must find it urgently. Then, if possible, we must neutralize it. How? simply by placing it in contact with water. Nothing could be easier in theory, but we must find a way to flood it. Flood the gunpowder? <laughs> You're out of your mind, Lavoisier. We're in the most desperate of situations and you want to deprive us of such a valuable resource. What will our cannons use once we have formed our army of patriots? Your army, Marquis, is presently but a figment of your imagination. I see. So you're one of those men who would sound the retreat before the battle has even begun. I will go to the warehouse. Once I have located the powder, I will decide what to do with it. Goodbye, Monsieur Levoisier. <laughs>